I mean, this looks obviously uh, pretty good for for uh, someone who <laughs> is having problems or challenges with Unreal and, and uh, not having done this before. Um, so did you have a reference or did you just... Uh, as, as I noticed you like these colors a lot. I've seen it on your photography as well. Yeah, uh, that's probably like a terrible crutch, but I use this reference. Okay. And obviously, like, it's actually quite difficult to pose metahumans because the rigs aren't IK. They're all, like, forward kinematic, which is really frustrating. Um, so I'll probably get the pose a bit better later, but I was trying to hit those same beats with, like, lit from above by something cooler and rim by something a bit more sort of, like, hot. Yeah, right. Um, I mean, I can see the it's... Uh... It's probably a bit difficult to pose the characters, I can tell by the hand, because the hand is kind of not posed the same right. way, so it's not leading uh, the, the eyesight as, as well. Um, mm. You can see the hand is in front, so um, you don't get the same, uh, you don't get the same strong uh, highlight on her, her hands like your reference image does. You can see that on your uh, reference that it has a it's almost the equal value that she has on the face. There is a, there's a light on her hand as well that kind of emphasizes uh, her hand a bit. And it also creates that it's in the foreground. So you can easily see that uh, the hand is on the foreground and the cheek and uh, everything's in the background. And then you have the red light that kind of separates her from the background, which is a bit stronger yeah, than yours as different well. Different um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely good. These sort of rims. And it's all just sort of spotlights. I'm not sure, like, if that is the the best. Well, for now, it's 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 all right. I mean, some people might do uh, area lights to get the more fill, but uh, since Jory is a very specific type of uh, lighting scenario, uh, it's probably a good idea with the spotlight because you can control it a bit. Now, of course, you have a lot of darker edges compared to your reference because if you look at your reference, you can still see the skin and everything, while yeah. uh, in your, of course. For various of reason, there's a lot of dark spots, uh, which uh, I guess it makes it a bit dramatic. But if you were to follow the reference more accurately, you would try and fill in and spread the cone of the light perhaps a little bit uh, to make sure that you can fill in the area a bit. Um... <coughs> so, well, it's a bit, a bit wild at the moment. Um... I guess uh, because on my original reference, if I bring that in, um, it was sort of just basically just like the top profile of the face was being filled, and then this sort of falls into shadow on this side, and it's filled by the red on this side. Found it quite a struggle to make that. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a little harder, especially if you're not using the cones uh, settings, because I see you're only using one right now. You're not using the inner cone. Uh, yeah. So some people would also use a spotlight, right, to put it out, and then they can also use the spotlight to kind of um, shape using the source radius. So you can see at the bottom here, if you pay attention to the material, you can see what happens to the specular effect, for example. Right? So yeah. So if I do... Uh, bigger you can see it it seems like it's bigger and it also affects the fog obviously as you see as well now if you have the length it takes a bit more you can see it increases the length so it sharpens it so if you combine it with the source radius you can see it kind of looks like a tube light so you you might actually like turn it around and then depending on the reflection you will see that it looks like a tube light on the reflection so when you do some of your lightings uh, eventually you'll notice that you're probably going to ask me oh the specular effect why isn't it uh, why isn't it uh, showing me the the the, the correct uh, specular effect so this is how you do it basically and that's the same for your eyes if you were to light your eyes or do something that requires a specular effect and you want a specific shape this is how you would get that specific shape and then you could use soft light and you can see what happens with the soft light it spreads it out right yeah so it's the same with your spotlight so right now you can see it has this kind of effect you can uh, sharpen it the edges 
or the penumbra as we discussed which is the same concept here they just name it they just name it differently you can kind of control the the gradient of the shadow on the face and then you can kind of try and soften it up a bit so you get that softness to it and this is kind of important as well when you do this type of lightning on your um, characters or, or, or people because you don't necessarily want a very sharp lighting on the characters mm. unless it's very dramatic now if we look at your reference uh, on your screen so what i'm trying to talk about is so most likely you can see obviously there's some kind of light coming down right and you can tell by the nose that this coming from upstairs so you can tell the direction of the light from the lips this is very important so it's coming from the upstairs but it's angled right so it's angling in a way that it captures the face but because of you have to remember the face itself is placed in a way that it creates this specific shadow the core shadow if you look very close you can see that's the core shadow right here see that yeah if you don't uh, do you see this yeah yeah so that's coming from the fact that the face is in the way most likely that's my interpretation of it and that's why when you see the light here the light is also falling smoothly here and here and you can also see it reaches the body because you can see the, the it's just generally blue everywhere and it lands on the hand and that's on purpose as well that's to create a shape for the hand as well so you could prob probably do this with one light there's one light coming down that's also why they placed the hand here is my guess is to make sure that you don't create this level of intensity further down here when it when it's unwanted but when i look closely i can see here that most likely there's a second light coming from the left side the reason i think that is because this one is a brighter red while this is as a pure red you see a yeah. brighter red that tells me that there's a second blue light that's kind of arguing or fighting here. you can see the the edges here on that's also kind of bluish on top of it so that tells me there's two blue lights at least could it be the red and the blue like cancelling each other out and becoming white or is it it's it's the tone that's telling you that there's another light there it's the it's a tone that's telling me it and it also is because it's there's a blue light here and it's a blue light here and i can see there's a blue light here and i can see right. that it, it bleeds over for all i know this is photoshopped on top of it that is definitely possible but you can see that there's a shadow area here you can see there's a shadow area here and you can also see that there is a shadow here but you can see there's generally a blue color coming and because of the placement of the hand it is an intensity of this one because if you really get close to it and you start evaluating this one is actually brighter than the face almost yeah so that means it's not coming from the top unless it's photoshopped naturally if it's photoshop it's a different thing uh, so if i click here and let's open this up so you can see that this one is on this scale this one is much brighter and that's where the blue is right and then you have a bright spot here and here so this is brighter this is not as bright so for me that suggests that there are other light sources going on but also because the intensity is somewhat similar also so if i click on the top here this is this one and i go for example on this spot this is still brighter so if do you know uh, inverse square law of light yep yeah so if we follow because this is a real photo if you follow that rule and the logic that's not possible that um that this light is brighter than this one if it comes from the same source right wouldn't you agree yeah right yeah so that tells me on the specular effect of this also tells me that there is a light source so the nails are also revealing the, the direction of the light sources okay and so is this little spot here because this one is kind of revealing that there's a light source over here 
But again, the the type of lighting they probably use is again soft light. That's why you should be uh, softening them up to get a different effect. And you can try that afterwards and kind of play around with the softness. And you should be able to get more of a softer look. Now, looking at your screen again. Um, this experiment here is that side light. Uh, it's creating really harsh shadows. <laughs> Yes, and you also technically can use any attenuation range to kind of control the light so it doesn't go all the way. So you can put it Ooh, closer okay. to where you want it. So sometimes you might want to put it up close, but with less uh, intensity. So you might put it on top of the hand to so say, okay, around the, um, the hand I want the light to be hitting. So you might put it like somewhere up. Uh, closer you might play with the range of this um, of it but also the the penumbra the the um, what's this called the inner core angle and outer core angle to kind of get that range you see that when you did that you can already see if you ignore the other areas you can see you're getting the same effect as your reference nope. image yeah. uh, you can see hopefully So do you see the difference? Obviously you can see the difference. It's pretty obvious. Yeah, she's got a big old hotspot on her forehead. <laughs> <laughs> she has a big hotspot, but that also, again, that will even out. So what's going to happen when you use uh, the technique I showed you, this is going to even out, so it shouldn't be a hotspot anyway. It will be like an even soft one, similar to, um, similar to what she has here. It, it should look like this uh, when once you do that properly. Uh, of course, it depends on the roughness as well on the skin, of course, uh, as well. So that also obviously ha has an effect. Another thing you can notice that it's a lot of black uh, where you don't actually see uh, her her neck where there is a neck, right? Yeah. Um, so here you can see it very clearly. Of course, you have um, clothing, I'm assuming, that goes a little bit up. But from what I can tell, uh, this area, if I were to um, use, for example, it's where I would to play with exposure, you can see the spot. Um, so you have like dark spot here, dark spot here. You can see that you have areas that you can work on to kind of make it more visible so th this should be a lot less for uh, for uh, her so as you can tell so if i were to do the same here i have more control over the exposure uh, for her right and you can see when i the only thing i see now is the edges um, right, the edges. If I go down, we're starting to see that we can still see a lot more. It doesn't actually affect, I can still see our neck, I can still see a lot of the shape. So what we want to work on for next time for this same piece, because it's not finished, because you have a reference, which is good. Because when you have a reference, we can really go into the thought process, the specific techniques to kind of make it pop, right? So here, I definitely would um, place the light in such a way, or if you have to, in this case, uh, make sure that there's no darkness. Now, of course, if you bake the light, uh, this should uh, get indirect lighting on its own. Uh, so that's also something you can play with. Um, of course, it doesn't help that her clothes are already dark, because if you were to bake it, what's going to happen if you have dark clothes? Uh, it's not going to be much bounce. Correct. It's going to be less bounce. So that's the biggest difference here. Here she has black clothes, but she has her skin as well. And you can see that really it's her skin that's uh, compensating here. It's not really the clothes itself. So um, 
you can see here I was talking about this one is pretty dark uh, this area over here on the cheek right yeah but we can see here that uh, big difference here it's not that dark nothing is so dark as as this right so what you want to try and do is you want to try and kind of if i were to duplicate this we don't ruin it because i don't know half of the time if this works because of the exposure level of what you have but you want to try and oh it's a bit too much isn't it but you want to try and get rid of a see this the thing when images are imbalanced uh i've said it before um you have this um issue when you do photoshopping like this is it's hard to manipulate the image and if it's hard to manipulate the image it there's a certain uh, issue going on with the exposure level in general so the areas i would work on is just to highlight a little bit right so you can see there's a highlight here there's a highlight here there's highlights here now these are things we need to add on your piece as well we can see it's um this is where we say flat right i mean to to be fair that's kind of what we mean when we say the image is flat uh, is that that is it's lacking those uh, difference of um of shape and form when you're working on it uh, yeah. so whenever someone is commenting oh it's flat it's flat or i if you notice me sometimes i'm telling people it, it's flat that's mainly the reason for it so generally speaking what you might want to try and do is kind of look at the image really study the image in detail then kind of make sure that you have this um this this area is a bit brighter and you have what else is it the neck area here is brighter you might be wondering oh, i don't see anything don't worry <laughs> and this might be a little bit brighter obviously we know for sure that this needs to be a lot brighter brighten up that neck area would you rely on like the baked bounce or like would you check another light in there to feel it or for the neck area i would definitely consider um i would definitely consider uh, the bounce or maximizing one light i think is is is, is very important uh, when you work with these kind of things so i would definitely try and um, try and do that to kind of emphasize uh, the um, the the bounce light yeah um if not i would obviously also consider because see we are trying just to play now and we can see that you're we're trying to fix the gradient in a way that makes a bit more sense right um mm. but also we have to remember i would also sometimes in this case uh, add a little point light for example cheap something cheap that doesn't cast shadow this is very important when you come to a point where something is difficult the pose is different in digital lighting and you cannot bake for some reason you're not allowed to bake that that's where you put in lights with no shadow because you don't want to have shadow in areas to show that you have some light so for example for this hand it might be that you don't cast shadow right it might be that because you already have uh, something going on uh, with her hair, you put on the light somewhere around here, then you say, okay, don't cast shadow. Then you will fill in the snack automatically, right? In this area. Right. So there are different ways of, of solving this. That's the, that's the fun part for you, I think, is there's not like, a, there's, there's a, for now there's a very little chance i'm going to tell you you're doing something wrong because the point here is first for you to learn the tools 
how to manipulate the tools and how do you replicate effect correctly and then we will start talking about how you could do it better or how you could do it in less light or actually you should have used the area light on top of the head instead of a spotlight i tricked you sorry you know so these are the things we're gonna go through afterwards but the key problem uh, with the current version we have good we have a good starting point we have the rim light we have the highlights on the hands we have the basic areas that we want right if it's not like it's, it's not like it's it's a bad image it's definitely a very good saw but as you can see it just stops you know it, it you can see that there's a light and it stops you can see that there's a light and it stops does that make sense yeah uh, and when you look at other pieces it has a nice flow to it it spreads around there's a super highlight on the edges and this is um, the cool part is this is obviously also rimming her um, I don't know you're the character artist this this um, not the, the area where the Adam apple starts afterwards this uh, bone structure here um, is also done on purpose so you can see that that's on the foreground right and you can also see if you really study what's the purpose of this painting let's take it from a point of painting you can see this is bright you can see this is bright these are all the bone areas so as a character artist if that's your background look at this that's the knuckle that's the crease points that's the bone area as well so that's the bone area as well so if you use that knowledge which you already have experience with the the lighting has been put in areas that shows that it comes out of the face or out of the body does that make does that make sense yeah yeah so if you look at this here you don't see the cheek like where's the where's the where's the where's the neck where's the cheek right uh yeah uh, where's the um, i don't know half of the stuff what they're called um so there's definitely some of the things uh, we want to continue to to work on so in short Yeah, by softening yeah. my softening my light radius is my soft source radius in Unreal. It should be softening the shadows as well, right? It depends on the method you're using naturally. What do you mean? Uh, let me see. So when you're using um, yeah, it should soften the edges of the shadow, yeah. Okay. But there is another way of softening the shadows if that doesn't work, if I remember correctly. Also, because you're using real time light, you probably want to play with something called shadow bias. Uh, if you scroll down, if, uh, you can, uh, if, as long as you look at my screen, it's fine. Yep. So there's uh, the shadow bias will probably solve some of your issues as well because uh, you want to play with it because if you don't play with it, it's going to bleed shadow across some of the areas. You see what happened? Uh, it's uh, not allowing the light to go into areas it shouldn't. So if I take it away, you can see that it's uh, bleeding in and through some of the places here it's, it's kind of blocking it up so you want to make sure the shadow bias play with it learn how to use it a little bit and it will allow you to fix some areas where you might stumble upon an issue where you see the light uh, coming through uh, the, the lips or through the um, eyelashes or through the hair or certain areas where you want to narrow down the shadow detail a little bit uh, and that's a kind of um, a good thing to do then. So basically, you want to just try and practice this a bit more. Right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm so slow at the moment. And yeah. So, is there what are the performance considerations for like playing with shadow bias? If I dial it up, is it gonna? No, it's just just it's just gonna ruin the. You, you dial it down to make it um, 
connect the shadow. So that bas basically the shadow bias helps you connect the shadow from the origin to, to the surface. Right. So um, it doesn't necessarily have like uh, any like super big problems uh, per se, uh, if you do anything uh, with it. So the idea is just to kind of, what I like to do is, is kind of what I'm doing now is after I've done a lighting piece, at least I did it before I'm doing, this is what I used to do before. If I had problems seeing things very clearly, or if I mm. wanted to test, I would go into Photoshop and I would just um, do like a quick paint overs and I would like just see, okay, what's the difference? Do you see the difference? Yeah, yeah. Right. So these are some examples of what we are missing. So if we turn this off, you can see now it's starting to get closer to the reference by doing this. I know I'm super bad at the paint over, but it doesn't uh, take super long time for me to do it. But at least this is hopefully this is helpful in terms of showing you the areas you need to work on and also why you need to work on it. And you've been given oh, yeah. you've been given some techniques that you can focus and play with that should be able to solve it. Um, if it doesn't solve it, feel free to bake the light. See how that works. Uh, if you still have problems, try area light for baking. If you want to use the area light for baking, uh, but I would use it around the, the top head and kind of make sure it falls down and and kind of get the 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 face to be the area where the area light is. It's also possible to do that on the edges if you wanted to. Also keep in mind the intensity uh, is um, this intensity is not even right the red intensity if you look at it it's not that even it's, it's within the same range let's just take away the color so we are sure we are clicking uh, my hands are hurting it's too much clicking so if I go around here you can see that it's not the same value range you know it goes up and down according to you know where it is but if we look at yours you can see it, it goes a bit high up almost to the top um, so you want to make sure that you kind of stay within the same range and also the same uh, color obviously um, so the range I think is more important here to make sure that the area you're doing the the colors for that they are um, not that uh, not the same necessarily this is also sometimes I will go in I will I boost them up a little bit to get an idea of how much brighter I need some areas to kind of fill in so the different techniques you can use on Photoshop to kind of speed up. I don't know how good you are in Photoshop to kind of manipulate your images to kind of quickly get an idea of stuff. Um, so the red hair and the red hair, you can see that you have a lot of red coming down all the way and then it's very dark or strong or contrast over here and then it falls down. But in your reference it's the opposite. This is the brightest spot. Then it goes up and then it stops a little bit and then there's a little bit of red hint here. Then it stops and there's the blue light dominates more. Here you can see I can't really tell for sure. Of course we have to keep in mind the characters you are using is not uh, within your control obviously. So take it with a grain of salt. But do you notice that this is even blue? Which, sorry, which is even blue? Your hair on your character that you uh, lit. Oh, right, yeah. Right? Now look at the reference. This is, just, this is only a specific area that is clearly uh, highlighted as a blue. And then it kind of goes into the shadow before it becomes a bit red, shadow, right. red. So these are the, like, the subtle things that, that we talked about before and what I want us to really uh, focus on to train you in. Um, does any of this make sense or am I not, is it too unclear or any questions yeah. make sense? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Um, yeah. Is it useful or no? For sure. Yeah. So I can break it down how to achieve it for sure. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, definitely, I would love to see you iterate again and come back with the new um, new version. Yeah, I think I will. Uh, more time to actually play this now, so it's gonna be good. Hmm. It'd be cool to um to do a couple of these and then uh, move on to like an interior scene if that's cool. Yeah, yeah, it's up to you. you. Go with your flow and your comfort level. Um, I think the the advantage of focusing on a character is less lights to focus on, but it also teaches you exactly what I'm trying to teach you here is to what to spot for, what techniques to use. And also so you understand the subtleness of the light and how it interacts with an object. Because if you have trouble doing it on a character, just like when you do drawing, you know, there's a reason people draw characters first. Because it kind of improves everything else afterwards. Once you figure out the character, it's easier to do everything else. So that's kind of why we're doing a character also to give you some practice. Try different characters with different skin, I think would be interesting as well. Because um, then... Uh, you would have to use it a bit differently because the lighter skin and lighter clothes it's interesting to see because uh, right now we're dealing with darkness but with the lighter skin and lighter clothes you might end up with a different challenge uh, when you have too bright so you have a white clipping as we call it right uh, and white clipping as you probably know is when you have um, when you start getting white and it and it's and it starts losing a certain shape uh, right so here you can see the shape but if if, if I were to like uh, manipulate your uh, image and uh, let's I guess the exposure is the easiest and if so that's white clipping that's like obvious white clipping at least right yeah you don't see the shape anymore but you have black clipping also which is the problem right now uh, we don't see the shapes so when I say black clipping, at least when you're talking to me, I'm talking about that I don't see the shape, it's too dark. If I say white clipping, I'm talking about it's too bright, I don't see the shape. Make sense? 